Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi my name is Monica. I like to post anti-MLM life and some true crime content here on this channel. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to stick around. In today's video, I'm doing a collab with Mindy Lynn here on YouTube. Thank you so much, Mindy, for even doing this collab with me and doing this interview with me. Part one is going to be on my channel and part two is going to be on her channel. So of course, I will leave everything in the description box below. Because we are going to be talking about some Scientology and multi-level marketing content, of course, this video is just for entertainment purposes only and our opinions. The reason why we decided to do this collab is because a lot of us tend to compare MLMs to cults or cult-like behavior along with sometimes comparing it to Scientology. So that's why we kind of wanted to merge the two together and do this interview together. So again, like I said, this is part one. Part two is going to be on her channel. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. So thank you so much for chatting with me today. If you want to introduce yourself and your channel and then let us know a little bit more about, I guess, what you do on your channel. Well, thank you for doing this with me today. Um, my channel is Mindy Lynn. That is me. And <laughs> on my channel, I do uh, true crime and I do a lot of anti-Scientology content. Um, I have a couple of different series going on right now where I go chapter by chapter in a book about Scientology. Right now I'm covering the scandal of Scientology and I just started an anti-Scientology school where I'm going to be going through books of Scientology and showing people exactly what they're taught and why this is a problem. Okay, so I guess why don't you give um, my audience a little bit of an overview on Scientology because obviously you're going to be more well versed in it than I am. So if you want to go ahead and just kind of chat a little bit about that. Well, Scientology started as Dianetics in the 1950s by L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard started out as a science fiction and um kind of like a penny rag writer he wrote for a penny a word and then he made a statement once that the only way to make any real money was to start a religion he wrote Dianetics as a way to get into the mental health field once it was rejected he decided to turn it into the religion of Scientology they've had a sordid past where you've had problems with the IRS they did have their tax exempt status at one point, then it was taken away, and then they actually bribed and followed IRS agents to get their tax exempt status back in the 80s. Uh, they have a horrid past of child abuse, both physical and sexual. They have a huge long history of disconnection. So like if you're in Scientology and one of your family members speaks out about it, then they will, they are told to disconnect from you. They have to cut off all communication. And it's just, it's a horrible, horrible cult, really. It's not even really a religion, it's a cult. Okay. Um, so obviously, I mean, we've seen a lot of celebrities and stuff like that that have left Scientology. Um, and I feel as though they're speaking out against it. And then there's also, what do you think about, I'm blanking on her name, but it's that one woman, I'm blanking on her name. Uh, no, the, um, the woman that like went missing and a lot of people think that she's oh i know exactly who you're talking about uh that's david miscavige's wife yes um, shelly yes shelly yes okay in my opinion there is a possibility that shelly miscavige is still alive um but i do believe she's being held against her will and she is being hit out in one of these like smaller scientology compounds um, we've had talk before of how people are held against their will. You have, there are dozens of stories that people have come out and broke books on stating that they had to break out of Scientology, that they were tracked down. And I do believe she is being held in a compound against her will. 
I believe she spoke out against David and he got mad. Um, matter of fact, there, the story of the day that she disappeared was she was being escorted out to a car and she was crying. And no one ever saw or heard from her again. And her and Leah Remney were actually really good friends. Leah has put out the, the letters that they wrote back and forth to each other. So for her to be completely silent all this time, I believe she's being held. If she was dead, I do believe we would have found her by now. Yeah, because as soon as I, I forget what I watched, uh, but it was, it was Leah Remini talking about it. And she was, again, it's just like you said, how she put out the letters and everything like that. So I guess with that, is there anything else in particular details or something like that, that you want to add to the conversation pertaining to Scientology? Like if, even if you have any opinions. Well, truly, I do believe that it is time for the government to step in. It, it's far past the time for the government to step in. Uh, Scientology right now is going through several different lawsuits, and they're trying to get them taken out of the legal system and put into what they call arbitration, religious arbitration. They've had one case that was in the courts, went through the religious arbitration, is now being um, introduced back into the courts, and that is the case of the Garcias who were defrauded. And you have the Danny Masterson situation that's going on right now, which, to tell you the truth, is not uncommon. Danny uh, Masterson is on trial right now for the sexual assault of several women. They've even come out and said that Scientology tried to audit them out of their beliefs on what happened and this is a common running theme in Scientology. So right now there are three major cases. There's the Garcia case, there's the Danny Masterson case, and then there is another case of a young woman, she's going by Jane Doe, who says that she was taken from the United States where she was sexually assaulted as a child, moved to Venezuela where she was continued in this sexual assault and then moved back to the States all during her youth. So I do believe it is time for our government to step up. One, take their tax exempt status from them because they are abusing that wholly. They are using this money that they get that they don't have to pay taxes on to stalk people, hire private detectives, put uh, tracking devices on vehicles, and that is all in violation of the tax exempt status. I do believe it is time for the FBI to get involved. A lot of these cases are crossing state lines. They're crossing international lines, so I do believe Interpol needs to get involved. And it is time for us to stand up and go, no, this must stop. So my next question for you would be, why do you think, in your opinion, why do you think that the government hasn't like stepped in and raided the place? Because if you if you want to take it back to yet another thing, if you want to talk about what happened in Waco, so that's a I mean that's a completely different situation and that's a completely different religion or cult. Um, but why do you think that? the government hasn't stepped in yet. To tell you the truth, I really think the government hasn't stepped in because of what happened in the 60s and 70s with Scientology. The government has raided Scientology in the past. I do believe it was in the 70s. They raided the Washington, D.C. office, and I think they raided one out in California, and they took thousands of documents and all kinds of other materials that were involved with Scientology, and it showed how Scientology was, one, trying to take over a small town, which is Clearwater, Florida, and two, the different ways that they were abusing their tax-exempt status at the time. They set up the, the mayor of um, Clearwater for a hit and run. They were trying to say that he had an illegitimate child, and they have all these different missions like there was the mission snow white and the mission clear the planet 
and it just laid out the details. But once they did that, they became part of Scientology's process of attack. And it, L. Ron Hubbard has clearly stated that if you have an enemy, it is fair to lie to them, to physically harm them, and to, quote, destroy them. And given what happened with the IRS agents when they did have their tax-exempt status removed and they were being stalked and threatened, I do believe that they're too scared. And at this point, you need to move beyond scared and move into the realm of actually helping and protect the people in your country. Yeah, I agree. Because I, I feel as though it's... Because I remember watching a documentary, I forget what it was called, but my fiance and I watched it. I really can't remember what it was called. And this was back in 2015, I think, that we watched the documentary. And they actually showed clips of people being followed and people having things thrown at them and like people trying to invade their home because these were ex-Scientologists that left. And... Oh, it gets even worse than that. They've had where they've cut down a massive tree in front of a building so that they can watch the people coming and going. They they have burst into business meetings in the middle of people giving a pitch and start berating them about this. They've put up these websites where they take some truth, but there's a whole lot of lies around that to make the person seem worse than what they are if you speak out against Scientology you become kind of a target so I've been standing on my channel going hey <laughs> come this way <laughs> so then my question is um I mean I because I don't know as much about Scientology as you do obviously but then my, my question would be if these Scientologists are coming after these people and they're coming, they're like you said, bursting into business meetings and things of that nature, why can't the ex Scientologists? Because I feel as though it's just like if you want to branch into anti MLM. So, of course, the FTC, they can't police everybody. So, it's our duty as the public to report these people, to report these income claims, health claims. It's our job to do that. So then, um, and then that way the FTC will be able to kind of catch wind of what's going on. But are these ex Scientologists? Because can't they go after them for harassment, slander, defamation? Uh, I mean, because some some of the the videos and clips that I was watching in that documentary, they were scary. And I mean, can't they go after them for stalking and stuff like that? Like, why? I I know that it's really hard to get a restraining order because I've I've done that in the past against someone. So I know I know that process. But can't they go after? Like, there has to be something that where the government and authorities can step in. Well, see, that's been the biggest problem. Like, you can, you have um, a few different sci- ex-Scientologists that have been speaking out. They have platforms on YouTube. You have uh, Growing Up Scientology. You have Chris Shelton. They've all put out these videos with evidence to back them up. They've gone to the police in the past about the issues. Um I think it was his name is Mark Freeman. I want to say it's Mark Freeman. He wrote an entire book talking about how him and his wife both had to escape from Scientology. They ran him off the road on a motorcycle as he was trying to escape. And they've all gone to the authorities. The problem is, especially like in Mark's situation, he was actually saved by the police. The Scientologists were circling back around to get him to take him back to the compound when the police pulled up, so they just drove off. But when they saw his ID, saw what his address was, and his address was the compound, they were like, oh, you know, well, we'll just take you to this other town. They don't really step up because it's hard to go after a church. 
and that's the way it's set up is the Church of Scientology. I mean, it's taken so many years to go after the Catholic Church for all the problems that are going on there. And it's the same with the Church of Scientology is they are hiding under this religious status, which makes it harder for people to go after them. And that's where the IRS needs to step in and go, okay, y'all have done this, 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 and this. It's documented everywhere. There's a TV series, there's documentaries, there's YouTube channels, there's podcasts. We need to step in investigate and take this status from you. And I believe as soon as that status is taken, all the dominoes will fall. Yeah, I think so too, because I I feel as though they depend heavily on that tax exempt status because they're getting away with it by calling themselves a religion. But really, I mean, if if they had that taken away from them, I do think that it would crumble. Um, Oh, yeah. It's just like with their uh, labor law violations. You know, they, you have the Church of Scientology and then you have what's called the Sea Org, where these people sign a billion year contract mm-hmm. because they believe that they come back. But these people are paid pennies, literally. Like some people that were in it for 15 years at the end, all they have to show is about like 15 grand for 15 years. And that's a huge issue but with them hiding under this religious umbrella they're able to say oh well they're volunteering or they're religious clerical people you know they fall under the same status as like monks and sisters and things of that nature and that's where a huge problem lies it's like this religious umbrella hides so many problems within this religion religion (laughs) i mean it it's so sad that they even hold these weekly like religious ceremonies where all they do is just continue to read l ron hubbard's lectures and that's another thing this man has been dead since the 1980s Their policies, procedures, everything is still as L. Ron Hubbard wrote it. L. Ron Hubbard was completely insane at the end of his life. He had severe paranoia. He was always believing he was being followed, being listened to. He was also a huge racist. And knowing what's in some of the stuff that he has wrote, now hearing that the nation of islam is partnering with scientology is insane to me it's just like really do you know what you're getting involved in but that's the problem most people don't understand what they're getting involved in because they pull people in with these you know personality tests and free class for acting or whatever and they start sucking these people in and it's like once they get in, they completely brainwash them and break them break them completely down and then build them back up as these little robots of L. Ron Hubbard. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's insane to me. So what made you get into making anti-Scientology content on your channel? <laughs> That's actually kind of a funny story. I already started my YouTube channel and I started watching the Leah Remney special. And at that time, I was working as a 911 operator. And I have a, a history as working as case manager for mentally and emotionally disturbed people. So I was listening to this and I was like, why aren't we doing something about this? And even though my channel is tiny and I don't have much of a following, but I love my followers. They're amazing people. I I decided somebody has to say something. So I just started at first with going through Leah's episodes, like piece by piece, doing a breakdown of it. And then I started getting into Tony Ortega's work. He has a website that's called the Underground Bunker. And he goes through like everything with Scientology. You can go way far back into Scientology and look at everything. So I started reading all that stuff and I would put out content on those articles and stuff like that. And then I was like, you know, the biggest thing about it is there's so many people that have spoken out that have been silenced, like the uh, 
book that I'm going through right now, The Scandal of Scientology by Paulette Cooper. Scientology tried to have this woman put in jail. They literally broke into her office, stole stationery that had her fingerprints on it, and wrote out a bomb threat and tried to have this woman sent to prison. They have sued her, I think, 18 or 19 different times. And this book that I'm doing right now, they literally got the rights to so that she didn't get any profits off of it. It's taken her years to get her own book back. And I was like, this is ridiculous. So everything that I could find, I was making content on, and it became one of those things of like, I cannot stand bullies. And that is what this church seems to be. So it's like, okay, I'm going to go headlong into this. So I've gone on thrift books and bought Scientology books. I've gone on the internet and found books that have been put up by people about Scientology. When it comes to talking about Scientology, because I was going to look into it and I was going to make a series of videos on it, but then I started to get a little nervous because, well, first of all, I was thinking in my head, okay, there's so much Scientology content out there. How can I possibly create any kind of content on that that nobody's seen before? And also because... I mean, it looks like you're doing really thorough research, whereas for me, it would just be whatever I could find and put together. But it seems like you're very, very invested in calling out this cult. Cult allegedly don't come for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I lately called them a cult. I'm like, come for me. Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was... I was afraid to make any kind of videos on it because first of all, what if they come after me? Because it's not nowadays with how the internet is, it's not that hard to find where someone lives. It's not that hard to, and then of course, Scientologists would dox you because that's just how they are. But um, yeah, I was just scared to do it. And so that's why I feel as though I can understand I mean, not really because I was never in it, but I can see why other people would be afraid to speak out, especially ex-Scientologists. And I think that it's good that someone like Leah Remini is out there really talking about this because she's a celebrity and a lot of people know a lot more about certain things about Scientology because she's spoken out. And I feel as though because... I, I feel I almost feel like everyone knows about Scientology. Everybody knows that it's a cult in our opinion. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and I feel like everybody knows that, but nothing's being done. And I do think possibly, quite possibly, they can have some people in their pockets that are in the government. Most definitely. The yeah. thing with Scientology is, is it's not just the Church of Scientology. They also have these, like, offshoot groups that don't have Scientology in the name. Like, they have Narconon. They have a prison outreach. And that is their way to try to get a foothold into the government. Um, I can't remember the girl's name, but she's famous for wearing a Trump dress. A few years back, Joe, Joy Vila, Joy Vila back in uh, 2016, wore a Trump dress to the Grammys. And she is a Scientologist. And it got a little scary there for a minute because Trump was actually speaking with her. He was shouting her out on Twitter. She had gone to a small gathering of people that Trump was speaking at and she had face-to-face -face conversations with him and that is one of the goals of Scientology. They want to get into schools which they had a problem back in England in the I want to say in the 60s where a teacher started teaching kids from the age of 3 to 11 this Scientology course but what ended up bringing that out was the thing that they called the quote death lessons and kids finally started telling their parents why they were so scared or why they were so upset. They want to get into universities. They want to get into industries. It even says at one point they want to get into mines and the government. 
they want to get into all aspects of life. So no matter what you do, you have to fall under the Scientology rules and regulations. And that's their main goal. They call it clearing the planet, but their main goal is they want control. And you can see it very clearly in how they got into Clearwater, Florida. They tried that in other parts of the United States. I mean, not in the United States, but parts of the world. He tried in England. He got kicked out of England. He tried it in Rhodesia. He got kicked out of Rhodesia. And he finally got a foothold in a small town in Florida. And now that town is constantly battling against the Scientologists. I mean, most of the downtown is dead because Scientology has bought the buildings and won't let any businesses in. So it's their way of trying to control people. Their main goal is to control everybody. So why do you think, because with, okay, so with anti-MLM, I feel as though there's not enough information out there. And that's why people are so quick to jump on some kind of MLM and they don't see it as harmful as something like Scientology. So how do you think, why why do you think that there's so many people, including celebrities and allegedly government figures and all that, why do you think that people are still joining the Church of Scientology when there's so much information out there and even like Leah Remini is out there talking about what goes on behind the scenes and that this isn't a church, this isn't a religion, this is a cult. So why do you think that people still join that? Because it, it, it looks more dangerous because MLMs, they don't look very harmful when you look at it from an outsider's perspective. They don't look harmful. You just think, oh, like I'm going to be able to sell, I'm going to be a Mary Kay lady and I'm just going to sell some makeup. Whereas with the Church of Scientology, you have to donate a ton of money. Oh, it's not donate. Oh, it's not donate. It's purchasing your material. Oh, purchasing. So here's the beginning material survey for the Church of Scientology. Okay. And each book that you're required to read, you have to pay for. They have all the books. So for the beginning books of Scientology, it would cost you $205. Then you move into, like, if you don't want to read the book, but you want to listen to it, the audio books, that costs you $255. Then they have some of the books are made into films. Each of those are like $22.50 a piece. The complete Dianetic set costs you $75. And then they have what they call the beginning classics, which, as you can see, is like a whole bunch of books. Mm-hmm. Cost you $300. Each book costs you. Then you have to pay for auditing. Auditing is is mandatory you don't get out of it and you have to pay by the hour for auditing and you go in and they have these things called an e-meter it's um it's supposed to be like a lie detector it's one of the components of a lie detector but you hold these cans and it goes off of the sweat in your hands the grip all that stuff you have, you're required to buy two of those. Now, it only costs them like $12 or something to make an e-meter, but you would purchase one for over $1,000, and you're required to have two. And you're required to pay for these chunks of lessons, and these can range you tens of thousands of dollars. So people are getting into this, Mainly, the main reason why people get into it is they get suckered into that personality test. Mm -hmm. And no matter how you answer the personality test, it's going to tell you there's something wrong with you. And then Scientology is like, oh, but we have the answer. And the answer is in this book right here, you know. And if you took this course, it'd make your life so much better. And the thing about it is it's very rudimentary therapy. 
So where you could go to a therapist and you may end up spending a couple of hundred dollars. If you got into Scientology, you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. Scientology is a billion dollar corporation. And that's another reason why a lot of people don't speak out. It's like they've got all of this money. They can come after me whenever and however they want to. But that's where it's time to pull up our bootstraps. And it's time for us to go, no, this is not right. I am tired of seeing this. I'm tired of families being ripped apart. I'm tired of kids being abused. That's what started me off is I'm a mother of two children. And my daughter had cerebral palsy and she passed away five years ago. She was 11 and a half. And I'm like, I cannot stand to see children abused. I, I don't care what capacity you're not going to abuse children. And so when I'm seeing these families being ripped apart, kids being turned against their parents and parents being turned against their kids and husbands and wives being split up because of this religion, I was like, I, I can't do this. I, I won't do this. I will not stand by and be silent. And that's actually what's pushed some people to do it to step out and say this is what happens in there but Scientology having all of this money they can silence a lot of people so are you afraid of being silenced at one point if they find that you're speaking out against them oh my my uh, my answer to that is bring bring yourselves to my little small town where I used to be a 911 operator and I'm friends with all the police come on <laughs> Well, it's good that you have them on your side um, because they can they can you know come and, and help you out. Also, I don't know if you heard me because you were talking, but I'm really sorry to hear about um, your daughter. That's that's really heartbreaking, and I feel as though so. If you want to take an example like that, do you think that? And because you've you've gone through those emotions, you've gone through that hard, you know, part of your life. Do you think that if someone else were to go through something like that, would they be so quick to just join Scientology because they're in a vulnerable state? Unfortunately, yes. Um, that's actually kind of happened in a few cases. Um, families that are recently split up, split up from divorce or a parent has died or in my case, a child has died. They are they're in that vulnerable state and Scientology is sitting there going, well, I can help you with that. I, I have the tools to help you with that. And, you know, it's not like they're, Scientology is very anti-psychiatry, psychology. And um, they're really kind of anti-medical assistance in certain areas. Um, so they are they're going, you don't need these people going back and saying, oh, it was your mother. You need this right now. And people are like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And when they get sucked in, it's too late. It's like they're already in. A lot of people get in and they're like, oh, I've already spent all this money. You know, I might as well see it out. And the problem with that is you have in certain instances where people lose their houses. They lose all of their life savings, they spent their kids college fund and they don't have anything to show for it except for a bunch of useless books and what they call auditing, which is not even therapy. These people can go into auditing and be completely berated and your records in Scientology are not like your records would be with a psychiatrist. There's no patient and provider relationship there. Anybody in the higher echelons of Scientology can go and pull your record and read all of your stuff. So there are hundreds of people that have their hands in your materials. And that's how all these hate websites get put up. And they've even put out like a series of hate videos on people. Once you turn on them, they are worse than like, an ex-girlfriend they are <laughs> on you <laughs> so bad it's, they know every move you make they know everything and it's 
it's horrible. It's a horrible way to live. But people get sucked in in times of vulnerability. You know, young actor out in Hollywood trying to break into the industry. Oh, well, we have this acting class. It'll help you. And we have so many people that are in the business. You know, we can get you an in. And people fall for that. It's not usually out of stupidity. It's usually out of a lack of something in their life. And they're like, oh, well, that sounds like that'll fix it. And sometimes a good self-reflection would fix what their problem is, but they buy into this. And a lot of people leave very quickly, but then you have the ones that stick around and it breaks up their entire families. You've had parents not attend their own child's funeral or children not attend their own parents' funeral because of some disconnection thing. And it's, it's really sad. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching part one of this collab with Mindy Lynn. Make sure to check out part two on her channel. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Did you agree with us? Did you disagree with us? Do you have any other thoughts about this particular topic? But anyway, that's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. And this is Monica reporting to you live from a highway. Bye.